I'm just going to wrap up the week on meal planning, just a little bit of review, some bonus tips. So to wrap up the week on meal planning, first we had the treasure hunt to find the recipes that we wanted to try and we found a place to keep them organized, whether that was in your email box, you print them out and keep them in, in a box at home, you keep them in Evernote or some other kind of online place. Um, you sit down, next thing was to plan out, make out a map out a plan. Uh, sit down with a calendar, look at whatever events you might have coming up, a meal planning sheet, which I did send out uh, freebies. So number one, look for ways that you can make two meals by cooking once. Now you could cook a, you can buy a larger roast and you could um, have it for roast one night, save part of what you cooked and use that for sandwiches or soup or um, something else later in the week. The same thing with buying a whole chicken. You can roast it and you know, I have found that it's cheaper sometimes to buy it already cooked, those um, chickens, especially when they're on sale, than it is to buy one yourself and cook it. So most of the time we just buy a rotisserie. But um, you could have it that night for vegetables and then you know whatever's left of it you could shred off the bones and use it for chicken tacos so if you can find two meals where you can just buy a little bit bigger of an amount cook it all at the same time it'll save you time and money hi Sherry thanks for joining number two try a new recipe each week while sticking with the ones you already know that you enjoy the rest of the week this will keep you from starving all week because you didn't like any of the recipes you picked. I don't know how many times we've tried something and we're like, Ugh, now we're going to be hungry the rest of the night. So don't plan your whole week with new recipes. You know, filter them in with things you already know you like so you will have something to eat. Number three, plan out themed dinners for each week. It helps to have um, it helps to have an organization to the chaos, especially if you have a large family like me. So ideas would be like meatless Monday, taco Tuesdays, leftover Wednesdays. Routines are very helpful while planning, but the themes will still allow for trying new things because obviously there's many different ways you can have tacos or meatless Monday. So find, you could find different recipes for that night, but it's all kind of a same theme. So it stays kind of organized in your house. Number four, think about ways that you can tweak what you already make that your family enjoys. So try adding an extra cup of vegetables to the soup, offering spaghetti squash as an option instead of pasta. You can, um, Another thing that we do all the time now is we make cauliflower rice. Super easy. You know how long it takes to make regular rice? Cauliflower rice, if you have a, um, a chopper thing, whatever you call it, um, it takes a pulsing it maybe three minutes. <laughs> and cauliflower rice is ready to go inside the skillet to make fried rice. So, um, we do that all the time now, but at first we started out with making both a little bit of rice, a little bit of cauliflower rice. And then we started doing a little bit more cauliflower, a little less rice until everybody was on board. Um, uh, number five, allow your family to help. Now, if they help pick out the recipes, if they help find the ingredients at the store, if they help prepare the meal, it almost guarantees that they will at least try it. Now, they won't necessarily love it, but they're going to at least say yes before absolutely saying, no, I'm not gonna eat that. So I have, I have taught my children from a very young age to start helping with grocery shopping, helping pick out recipes that they wanna eat and cooking. 
and um, they thought they were, you know, big kids when they were at the store getting to help pick out the stuff. So when they got to bring it home and they also got to, you know, help make it, we used to make uh, tortilla chips uh, homemade. And my daughter, um, she didn't like that idea at first, but she's the one that started making them and they were turning out really good when she made them. So then she ended up being the person that always had to make them. But um, she still remembers that. She's uh, 20 years old now. Uh, so let them help you. Let, let them, you can also let them um, think it's their idea, you know, and say, hey, what do you feel like eating? You know, maybe you can look through this book here and see if something looks good to you, you know? And then when it's time to go to the grocery store, you know, just suggest, why don't, I'm going to let you pick out a new vegetable this week or, or whatever like that. And, um, like I said, it almost guarantees they will try it. And more than likely, if they've had to help cook it, they'll actually say they like it. Number six, the meals you're trying out for the first time or that you know are more complicated. They have a lot more steps. Make sure that you plan them for days that you have little to no obligations so that you have the time to devote to the preparation. Avoid the nights that you have soccer practice or the softball tournament weekends. Um, my girls were all-star cheerleaders and we went to um, weekend uh, competitions. They had weekly practices. Try to schedule those meals on the days that you'll have more time or else you'll feel rushed and um, more stressed. Number six, the, that was number six. Number seven, have leftover night the day before grocery day and clean out your fridge so it's ready for your fresh new groceries. Um, this is something we've done for a long time. It's really, you know, really helps out to, um, to, to, to first of all, not have to cook that night. You get out the things that were left over. Um, we, we eat them kind of like a buffet type style. Everybody scoops what they want. Then we get rid of it and we wash the dishes and the fridge is empty, you know? Um, number eight, eat before you shop. Especially feed your kids before you shop. You will be, it'll make it, uh, you'll make more impulse purchases when you're hungry and when they're hungry. If they've just ate, if you've just ate, you'll be able to pass up those end caps where they're trying to get you to buy this new cereal or try this ice cream or whatever is there. Um, so we always have lunch before we go shop. Number nine, remember to take baby steps. Be patient with yourself. If you're eating all of your meals from a box or a restaurant, planning a week's worth of home cooked meals will be overwhelming and you'll quit before the week is even up. Just try one or two nights at first and then keep adding on to that. You don't have to clear out everything in your pantry and buy new things. You know, each time something runs out, purchase the better option instead. Some examples are brown rice instead of white rice. You know, just because, you know, brown rice is better for you doesn't mean you need to throw away your three bags of white and go out and buy the brown. Go ahead and finish off the white and then get the brown. Sprouted seed, uh, sprouted seed bread instead of white or wheat, a cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes. Any of those kinds of things that you're wanting to change, wait until you finish what you have first, you know, or else you'll be feeling like you're spending way too much money on healthier food. Um, because it, because that's usually what it is, is you're replacing everything all at once and you're seeing a way higher of a grocery bill at first. So once you have a few weeks, you know, under your belt, make a master family favorites list to reflect on what you're ready to plan it whenever you're sitting down ready to plan again. 
keep adding to this list as you try new recipes and find out that you enjoy them. You too will eventually have a month's worth of different options to choose from like I do in my house.